to the continued assaults, first snatchings of generalized rampaging by a group of disenfranchised youth on number 14 line of a Rooney City bus system, better known as the Gates Avenue Gauntlet, or more colloquially, the Nairobi Joyride. <laughs> we shall commence you know with the um, Operation Bust Out. Set up raising the place behind the wheel of Metro Transit Vehicle 147A, our very own Lucille Bates. Still actively licensed Class 3 stage chauffeurs from a prior and fortuitous piloting stint at PS67. Plain close passenger backup to be discreetly supplied by Officer Hill and Rank. That's 147 A people, East Utica to the river, so let's keep our radios peeled for additional backup, shall we? Item nine. Um, hey, hey, Schmelzer. Do you mind? <laughs> Item nine, and a somewhat more parochial note, referencing the transfer for request to Washington Heights of Officer Robin Tattaglia, said transfer duly and approved effective as of a.m. tomorrow. Though her sojourn be regrettably brief, suffice it to say she leaves oh, this don't hill go, don't a go. gentle domain for her presence, a more melancholy one for her departure. Now we're just 28 blocks and an inner precinct patch in a way. So let's not be a stranger, huh, Robin? That's right. Item 10. Regarding a 1 p.m. community meeting to be held today at the Holy Christ Baptist Church, they are citizens' grievances resulting from the unfortunate in-custody death in cell 5 last Tuesday of one Lynn Tatum. In addition to local religious and civic leaders, said meeting is expected to be departmentally represented by Chief Daniels, Captain Frillo, and Lieutenants Goldblum and Dibble, along with Councilman Mangiotti of the 17th District. I don't need to tell you where the high temperature of the city is expected to be recorded today, in anticipation of which the following officers are hereby assigned the perimeter duty, Peterson, Joyce, Tepaz, DiCarlo, Militello, Hurley. As a tendential cautionary people, given the somewhat strong backlash on this one, let's be especially circumspect in our dealings with the citizenry these next few days, shall we? Particularly with regards to the application of physical force. Last item. I'm sure most of you are aware by now that Detective Belker lost his father yesterday. And those of you wishing to pay your respects may do so at Hallman's funeral home on West Huron, 9 to 12 today. At which function the department shall be represented by Lieutenant Howard Hunter. Those of you inclined to chip in for a precinct wreath may do so care of Leo at the front desk. All right, that's it. Let's roll. And hey, 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 hey! Let's be careful out there. You have bugs on your face. You have bugs on all on your face. You can just lighten up, Pally. Whatever happened between me and Kristen out there is my business. Hey, Mick, what are you doing? I don't know. I woke up about 2 o'clock this morning. I couldn't get back to sleep. My mom's sleeping at my sister's. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go over there in a little while, bring her some breakfast. Just thought I'd catch up on some paperwork. It's too cold out to walk. Nick, are you sure you're all right about my transfer? Yeah, I'm OK. I better be going out. I'll see your mom's at four, okay? Yeah.
six months ago. Oh, is that so, Mr. Bus Commissioner? Well, let me tell you something, Professor Know-it-all. Oh, Pete, you talk about something expiring. Oh, that's disgusting. Hey, Ma'am, that wasn't me. Hey, look, it was a guy right behind me. The bus fumes aren't bad enough, Mr. Stinko. You gotta put your two cents in. In a barn with livestock you were brought up, I suppose. Ma'am, if you don't like the ambience back here, I suggest you vamoose to another section of the bus. Another section of the bus? Another section of the state's more like it. The radio's on. You hurt. And while you're at it, put out that cigarette. Hey, what are you, my mother? Do I look like a test tube? I said turn it down. Can you read this sign? Obviously you can't because they don't teach them to read on Mars. So listen to this. No music, no smoking, no food or drink, no talking to the driver, and no spitting, sweetheart. So far, you're back to 800. Okay, that's... 
that funny. Make that five for five, sweet me. No, really, that, that's very <laughs> I've made up my mind. Hey. Okay. I'm gonna have the baby. Uh, are you sure you, you've given enough thought to how this is gonna affect you financially, emotionally, socially? Frank, I have thought of practically nothing else for the last three days. What about Grogan? Is he still taking a hard line? Oh, I don't know. I guess so. It doesn't matter. I mean, I wouldn't even take diaper money from that worm now. And as far as those social services are concerned, well, I've run that gauntlet. You want to know something, Frank? I don't need them. I woke up this morning with the most warm, beautiful memory of giving birth to Frank Jr. And suddenly it was all clear to me. I'm healthy, I have resources, and I want this baby. You're serious about this, aren't you? I have never been more serious about anything in my life. Then I'm with you. <laughs> I feel stronger and, and, and more directed about myself than I have in years. I even have the makings for a wonderful article that I'm going to meet with Metro Gazette on this morning. What do you think? Uh, divorced, pregnant, and alone. One woman's odyssey through the bureaucratic maze. has a ring to it. Never say ring to an unmarried mother. <laughs> oh, God, particularly one who's late for a nine o'clock appointment. Thanks, Frank. Is your first name Joseph? Yes. Did you enter Lynn Tatum's holding cell on the 14th of this month? No. Prior to this month, did you use more force than was necessary in the course of an arrest? Yes. Any cop who says no to that is full Just of Just answer yes or no. Are you currently an officer of the Hill Street Precinct? Yes. Did you choke Lynn Tatum at any time the man was in custody? No. I mean, out on the street, yes, but uh, not while he was in custody. Did you choke Lynn Tatum at any time after his arrival in the precinct house? No. Frank, everyone is canceling from the town meeting. If you want to reschedule, I better let the Reverend know quickly. Who's pulling out? The mayor, Chief Daniels. Scheduling conflicts. I get the feeling this is chronic. Well, let's go ahead and take our medicine. Do you want me to come with you? No, I need you here, Ray. And yet Henry Goldblum is going with you. Ray, part of Henry's job is public relations. Part of your job is to be here when I need you. You doubt my ability for leadership, Frank. But when do you allow me to lead? Listen to me, Ray. After our talk the other day, I pulled your evaluation forms. Now, they could be stronger, probably, but I think you'll have to agree that overall they're pretty positive. 
I have every confidence that Lieutenant Cayetano's leadership abilities will continue to develop over time. And that's an accurate expression of my opinion. Now, that's only one of nine categories. But overall, I, I, is the evaluation positive? Yes. And still, there's no guarantee of your captaincy. I mean, whether you get it or not, or whether I'm fair to you all the time, you still have a job to do here. Have I ever not done it? No. Have you ever had reason to doubt my loyalty? No, never. I'll do my job, Frank. That doesn't mean I have to be happy. Fair enough. And again, someday, I am going to be captain. I don't doubt that, Ray. Miss Davenport. Hi. Hi. Have you ever had venereal disease? Do you have it now? No, no! Mother's maiden name? Zerilli. One R, two L. Uh, date of your final divorce. Uh, date your divorce was final, I mean. <laughs> January 16th, 1979. What is that? A marriage license, Brillo. Clerk's office. Wait the three-day wait. They're gonna trust us on the Wassermans. Care to put your money where your mouth is? <laughs> we are gathered here in the presence of this witness for the purpose of uniting this couple in matrimony. This contract is most solemn. Not to be taken lightly, but thoughtfully, deeply. And with a full understanding of the responsibility of the commitment you're about to make. Do you, Francis Ferrillo, take this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife? I do. Do you, Joyce Davenport, take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband? I do. Do you each promise to love and comfort one another? In adversity, as well as in prosperity. In sickness, as well as in health. And forsaking all others, remain faithful to each other? We will. We do. By the power vested in me by this state, I pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride, should you feel so inclined. She did real good. That girl could have been a tank driver in Nam the way she moves that cap car down the street. She took this here, this, this punk, this I said, hey, Brandon, how you doing? Want to leave the day, Norton, huh? Why? <laughs> hey, they tell me you have a future in uh, transportation. Yeah, I got a real future. It's about as promising as a shin split. You know, so far this morning, I got two junkies lose their lunch in the back seat. I got three cabbies shooting me the bird. I got this Johnny Rotten clone who spits up grape soda on my shoes, and I got a lewd freak who gets his head stuck in the rear exit. Did you get the results? What, the lie detector test? No, your pap's in your jaw. Come on. I got straight A's. Pass with flying colors. What else? Yeah, it doesn't mean anything. What are you talking about? You're passing the polygraph, has got to tell him something. Hey, it's inadmissible in court. 
it isn't even going to get to court. You still don't get it, do you, Luce? They need a scapegoat for what happened down there in Ahmed. You know something, Joe? You're getting paranoid. I'm not paranoid. I'm just facing facts. I'm having a chow mein. I can only repeat that we understand your frustration and we share your concern. Captain. May I point out the absence of a few prominent invitees, like the mayor, hmm. the chief of police? Yes, where are they? Is where that the kind they? of concern you're talking about? Nobody's going to deny that this is a political hot potato, Reverend. We're also not about to deny that there have been times when people in police custody have died at police hands. It's happened. It's happened to black people. And we can understand you thinking that it may have happened to Lynn Tatum. On the other hand, we have no choice but to conduct the investigation entirely as the evidence leads us. I was on that street. I saw that cop talking that boy. He hated that boy. <laughs> In the last five years, there has been 14 in custody deaths in the police stations of this city. Hmm. 13 of the people who died were black. The other Hispanic. Now, there's a message in those figures, and we read it loud and clear. The message is that statistically, 89% of the population of the Hill is black and Hispanic. That means that an overwhelming percentage of the people arrested there are going to be black or Hispanic. Listen, I don't care anything about statistics. My son is dead. Yes. And there's no reason for it. Now, I had a good son. He didn't go around making trouble. Look, an investigation is being conducted into the death of Lynn Tatum. If that investigation points to a police officer, that officer will be charged and brought to trial. Captain, hooray for you. I can only promise you that every effort will be made to get to the bottom of this prisoner's death. You're going to be remembered as that bankrupt, watermelon-headed club owner out on Highway 9 that blew a chance to book Vic Hitler's comic debut for nothing! You think you got a rough? Fellow walks up to me and says, you see a cop around here? I say, no. He says, okay, stick him up. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear the one about the overly familiar midget? Uh, walks in this bar, kissed everyone in the joint. Sweetheart, how are you? Oh, I am pumped. I am oh. pumped. I stayed up half the night, you know, working up new material in my motel room. So, how are we doing on bookings? Oh, great. great. Good. Just great. Good. I, I got to tell you, though, I've been running into a lot of static on account of the name thing. Oh, come on. Look, look, look. look be before you put the idea out of your mind completely, just do me a favor. Just consider these alternatives that I cooked up. Vic Roma, Vic Dakota, that's cute. Vic Anthony, Vic Vegas. Ugh. Sweetheart, I'm about to throw my lunch over a fence and I ain't even had breakfast yet. Come on, Vic, what's the big deal? It's only a name. Yeah, only a name that's been in my family for over 400 years. That's a good 320 longer than that deranged house painter Adolf, if the truth be known, came into the world the son of an Austrian pencil pusher by the name of Schickelgrupp. No kidding. Yeah. I don't even want to tell you what my grandfather told me on his deathbed 30 years ago. Vic, I'm going to go through a lot of pain in this life on the comet. Promise me, son. 
promise me you'll never forsake the family name. Sorry, John, but into the cards I was dealt. They kept where it stays. What the hell with this polygraph, Frank? I've got half the population of your precinct screaming bloody murder. That's no basis for convening a grand jury. Look, I'm not saying we're coming down with an indictment on your client, but we're certainly justified having this biker testify. You really want to grease the wheels of justice? You take a closer look at your star witness. Crockett had motive, access, and, and a record of violent crimes two inches thick. There isn't a shred of evidence against Crockett, and you know it, Frank. What there is since 11 o'clock this morning is a forensics report showing microfibers from Coffee's shirt on Lynn Tatum's neck. Everybody knows Coffee used a chokehold making the arrest. No fibers from Crockett anywhere on Tatum's person, and Crockett was wearing a shirt. Whose sleeves were probably rolled up. You, you care to join in this discussion, Counselor? What discussion? Man's mind is made up. So we finished here? Oh, yeah, yeah, before we began. You excuse me, gentlemen. Uh, Will you be at the grand jury here? My officer has to be. I got to get off this bus. Are you crazy? I'm sorry I lost my bladder sound of this hen moon warning about five blocks ago, and I, I got to get off. It's gonna look a little conspicuous if I have to wait for you. Well, it's gonna look a lot more conspicuous if I don't get off this bus if you catch my drift. Okay, okay. But you better be quick. Excuse me, ma'am, for having bodily functions. Yo, move back! Everybody just be there and get up the drinks. If you think about moving, I'll blow your head of Come on, bus. And you know that. Hand over your purse, mama. Hey, hey, come on, quick! It. Give me the money! Come on! Hold it right there, police officer! Get out of here! Get out of here! Get out of the way! If you want to shack up in some van with a 16-year-old, that's your business, babe. But don't call me into the trial as a character witness. Oh, man. Oh, Leo, for God's sake, not here. Better in here than all over the front desk. I'm telling you, man, Kristen is a very mature 16-year-old. And hey, hey, I'm a young 35. Uh, yeah. 35 going on 10 to 20 of state. Thanks for the advice, you dried up, refried Baptist prude. You John D. LaRue? Yeah, who wants to know? Just a guy who's gonna break forth your legs and flush you down the toilet. Hey, if it's about Manusco, you tell him he'll have his bread by Tuesday. Uh-uh. Oh, oh, Sheila. Yeah, but a kid ain't mine, I swear to God. Uh, uh, hey, well, then why don't you just cut this ghost of Christmas past routine? Tell me, who the hell are you? I'm a father of a 16-year-old jewel of a daughter named Kristen Murphy Scuzzbag. And you, my friend, are one dead child molester. I swear to God, Mr. Murphy. Hey, it was a field drift. I mean, I mean, we were talking about criminology, you know, basic surveillance. I never laid a hand on her. I left her in the van. I didn't even go back. If she says I touched her, she's lying. You calling my baby a liar? Of course not. It's just... Oh, my God. Don't tell me that's a gun. Say your prayers, Scuzzbag. Please, man. Please, I'll never touch a girl under 18 as long as I live. 
Okay, 25. 30, 35. Go ahead. Go ahead and shoot. You gotta shoot the junkie first. talk here for a minute? Sure. Okay, can I get you a chair? It's okay. I'm fine. I, uh, I've been doing a lot of soul searching. About us, I mean. I want you to know this is very, very hard for me to say. I mean, I like you a lot. More than that, I respect you. Yeah, you're probably the greatest 16-year-old I've ever known. But I don't think it's a good idea, you and me. It just won't work. You need somebody your own age. Now, look, if you ever get in a real jam, an emergency or something, if you're ever lonely, if you're ever lonely, you can always call me. But us is a steady thing. I think we better call it off. Okay. Bye. Tim speaking. Who is this? Tony who? T Tony from Eugene. Tony! Hey, hey, Tony, baby, what's happening? Really? Hey, that's too bad. Uh, what's wrong with the guy? And the silence. Hmm. Well, well, sure we can make it. You bet. 7.30? See you there. Bye. Hey, oh, deal, deal. Have you seen Vic? Last I heard, he was down in the locker room trying to cop some Z's. Any news? Just keep your dance card clear for tonight, honey. Bobby? Captain? How'd it go? We got two of them. The other two got away. One of the kids who escaped took a shot at me. And I had him right in my sights, and then I... I couldn't pull the trigger. What was the crowd situation? There were other people around. I'd say you showed good judgment. Maybe. But I gotta tell you, Captain, part of why I didn't pull that trigger was because I didn't want to get hung up like Joe Coffey. I understand. It makes me angry to have thoughts like that running through my mind when I'm out on the streets. Bobby, the hill's been a powder keg lately. And you're deciding not to bring down a perpetrator in a situation where a mistake might buy a riot strikes me as exercising sensible restraint. That kind of restraint, Captain, could cause lives, too. It's a delicate balance. But given the existing atmosphere, I'd say you made the right choice. Uh, Bobby, 
I, I got married this afternoon. You're kidding. Congratulations, Captain. Thanks. My best to the bride. I'll tell her. Is it, is it a secret? Machine's <laughs> oh. Comedy Empire. You got it, Vic. Was your buddy John come through? You know the tradition that place has. All right, so they served a couple of miners. Now, yeah. wait a minute. I'm going back 15, 20 years. Eugene's is one of the classic toilets. Hey, look, beggars can't be choosy. He's still not getting it. I mean, some of the top guys started there, you know, Shecky, Don. I think that's even where Lenny Bruce OD. Why didn't you wake me up sooner? I got a million things I got to do. I mean, my whole time clock is going to be off. Hey, hey, as long as the gag meter's running. That's like riding a bike. Yeah, a lot of people around here are going to be sorry they missed the boat. Thing Leo had some big... Hey, good news, Frank. Metro Gazette is very enthusiastic about my article. They want to see a rough draft by Friday. Oh, great. Thank you. Hey, listen, I'm missing one of my folders. I think I may have left it in your office. Sure. Congratulations, Captain. Thanks, Leo. Wonderful news. Congratulations for what? Come on. What? We have to talk today. What's the big mystery? Uh, Faye, listen, uh, I, I, I was, I was going to tell you this under better circumstances. I'm, I mean, I was going to come by after work and, uh... What? I got married this afternoon. Married? Yep. Re really, Frank? Married? Yes. Oh, boy. Uh, sit, sit, sit down. Sit down. Oh, boy. You okay? Ah, uh, uh, Joyce Davenport? Ah! Uh, what a stupid thing to ask. Of course it's Joyce. It's just that... Well, I'm just so surprised, Frank. It's, uh, hey, uh, I'm, I'm happy for you. Really, I am. I'm, I, I know that you're going to be very happy and that the, the choices. Thank you. Of course, your timing is pretty damn lousy. I have to say that. How do you mean? Well, well, you know, it's just that, uh, that, uh, that I'm pregnant and, and, and that I'm just really trying to get it all together and then I'm finally seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and then and you turn it into another dream. Frank, how could you do this to me? Is this what you meant when you said that no matter what I decided, you'd be there for me? I mean, you call this help? Come on, Fanny. We both have lives to live. Let me live mine. I'm sorry, Frank. Really, I'm sorry. I, uh... I'm okay. I'm really... I'm still going to be there for you and Frank Jr. And any new starters. I really am happy for you, Frank. I know you wanted this. I'm all right. I'm okay. Congratulations. Thank you. And, and, um, please give my best wishes to Mrs. Choice. <laughs> 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 
You want to hear the stupidest thing, Frank? Mm -hmm. After two minutes ago, with everything that's happened between us, after two minutes ago, I always thought we'd get back to Five minutes. Oh, it doesn't have to happen that fast. I'm here to prepare you for your grand jury testimony. Outstanding. You're going to be questioned about events leading to the death of Lynn Tatum. You'll be giving testimony under oath. You're expected to answer truthfully. You have the right not to incriminate yourself. I can't come into the hearing room. But if you're confused by a question, or you want to talk to me for any other reason, the judge will grant a recess, and we can confer in this room. Do you understand? I don't think we'll be doing too much conferring. That's your prerogative, Mr. Crockett. Cops want that guinea. I'm going to give him to them. They want the truth, Mr. Crockett. Listen, lady. You people have been on my case since I was five years old. You give me a chance to hand some of it back, you bet I'm going to. I'm going to jive. I'm going to lie. I'm going to teach that guinea cop just what it Mr. means. Mr. Crockett, to... you've just told me you intend to lie in a court proceeding. This would be a crime, and I urge you as your attorney and an officer of the court not to do it. Oh, well, sure, I mean, if you urge me. If you don't reconsider, I'll have to withdraw as your counsel. You must not stay on too many cases, huh? I cool that nigger. You betcha I'm gonna lie. I urge you not to perjure yourself, Mr. Crockett. You said that. Will you reconsider? I'll kick your teeth in. You'll have to delay Crockett's testimony. I can't represent him. What do you mean? I can't represent. Get him another lawyer. Well, look, I know the guy's no day look, at the beach. Look, it's not a personality conflict. Would you mind telling me what it is? I can't represent. I'll inform Judge Michaels. Hey, Joyce, what? tell me what's going on. Is he lying about seeing Coffee murder this guy? I can't tell you, Mark. You know that privilege applies. Hey, Counselor, come... What are you pulling, some kind of phony delay? Look, just represent him another hour. I've got pressure on me, Joyce. You'll resign right after he testifies, all right? No. Oh, yeah. Uh, if I'm not cross-eyed, Miss Davenport has just preserved the lawyer-client privilege while informing the district attorney that my client is innocent. I wouldn't go that far. How far would you go? Come on, Alvarez. If it was anything but perjury, she could have stuck around another hour. Crocker was going to go in there, commit a crime, she walked away. Let's quit dancing, Alvarez. <sighs> All right. In conscience, the inference I draw is that Crockett's lying. No grand jury for now. Am I okay? Well, better than you were five minutes ago. Looks like we licked him on the criminal charges. Yo, what about him? He's the one who should be charged. Okay, look, we got a good case, okay? I'm gonna hustle down to Michael's court, see if I can pick up anything else, huh? Hey, thanks a lot, Sam. Yeah, sure. Go sure. so slow for me. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? 
I'm okay. I'm mad. I'd say it's a hurdle overcome. No, it's more like I just started out on a marathon. I mean, isn't that what she did? They can't use that, right? Her letting the DA know that Crockett was gonna lie. It's privileged communication. But people are still gonna think that I did it. Some will, sure. And I could still get sued. Joe, look, I've always thought of you as a survivor. If you're gonna survive this, you're gonna have to do it one day at a time. You start chewing on all the possibilities. No, I'm going to survive. I'll survive. I'm going to go home tonight and figure out my future. I hope you're not considering leaving the force. I'm not going to resign. I just know I'm a good cop, Captain. It's just so damn unfair. Talking it over, just the two of us. Working together day to day. Together. I can't believe you, Schnitz. Everyone who can do you absolutely no good. All I had to hear was who's managing him. The blind leading the unmentionable. We got strict financial oversight, Mrs. Schnitz. Outside accounting. I'll give you outside accounting. I hope you enjoyed this, Leo. I hope this is worth a life without sex. Hey, Leo, Myrna. Showtime. So how's our boy? Thank you. Oh, money in the bank. He's feeling great. Thank you very much. Isn't she something else? Come on, let's give her a big round of applause. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for your laughing and listening pleasure, you, James, proudly presents the comedy stylings of Dick Hitler Jr. Let's bring him on. All right, all right. Thank you very much for that moving introduction. Remind me to use you next time I apply for a loan, all right? That's it. Good. All right, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what is this, a convention of monks or someone just say E.F. Houghton? I don't know what we're going here. <laughs> Excuse me, do you know anything about real estate at all? Anything? A little bit? Tell me, is this a lot? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm not doing it. You know, I didn't mean that. All right. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Submit it. For your consideration, aging entertainer on a one-way ticket to comedy hell. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's an honor and pleasure to be working here at, where am I? Eugene's. Thank you, Eugene's, <laughs> right, it's Eugene's, isn't it? Well, maybe not an honor, but at least it gets me out of the house, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, not that I don't have an absolutely lovely wife. Or just last week, she got a mud pack at the beauty shop. Looked terrific for three days. Then the mud came off. Went back the next day, spent over five hundred dollars. That was just for the estimate. Sullivan was alive. Seriously, I told her this morning. I said, Sasquatch. Uh, no, come on, come on. Seriously. <coughs> like the Academy Awards. My wife says, may I have the envelope, please? <laughs> I've been married for 10 years, and I'm still in love with the same wonderful woman. And if my wife ever finds out, she's gonna kill me. You know what I mean?
<laughs> what is the, uh, the uh, sleeping uh, routine here? Pure improvisational genius. Oh, yes, sir. Do you know what? <laughs> I uh, just came back from a pleasure trip. I took my mother-in-law to the airport. <laughs> Last week, I told her, I said, my house is your house. Two days later, she sold it. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> huh? uh, boy. Last week, my brother-in-law... <laughs> what a character he is, huh? I'll tell you. Last week, uh... I asked him what he was doing wearing my trench coat. He says, well, you wouldn't want me to get your new suit wet, would you? That <laughs> 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 sleeping routine's rather amusing. <laughs> Seriously, folks, I... My brother... Save it, Vic. <laughs> Did I go out? You went out. Is there uh, something you want to tell me, Vic? Looks like you already found out. What the hell's the matter with you? Narcolepsy. I swear to you, J.D., I thought I had it licked. Cook short order four years in St. Louis. They had this clinic, and uh, they were giving me treatments. They said I was cured. 40% chance. Vic Hitler, the narcoleptic comic. How long? Long enough. J.D., is there any way I can make it up to you? You and your beautiful guys? Vic Hitler. The narcoleptic comic. <laughs> What went out? Two perpetrators held up a liquor store, one black east of here in Utica. The owner called it in. Officer Hardy and Welsh responded. Jason to this warehouse where the shootout occurred. Hardy's an ICU. One of the perpetrators is killed. And the other? He was apprehended by your day guy, Belker. He was driving nearby and he called it in. What about the perpetrators? Black, white? White. Who's Belker? Driving around, I heard it on the radio, so I I just came over. I, I don't know. You okay? Fine. Mother? She's okay. Doctor gave her a sedative. Captain, I heard you got married today. Very happy for you. Sorry I had to come out tonight. It's okay. You have some place to go, Mickey. Where's Robin? How'd you know about that? Precinct's a hard place to keep a secret. 
Yeah, I guess so. I'm out, Captain. I've been with people all day. I just wanted to get out by myself for a while. You want to talk? I'm okay. I should have known my dad, Captain. Last few months, he wasn't really himself, but he used to be something else. <laughs> you think I can bite? Once, when I was five years old, I saw my dad get into a fight with a guy that was about the size of a Mack truck. And my dad was a little guy just like me. He took a bite on this hairball's arm, and he held on for life. And this big guy is shaking his arm up and down, up and down, and my dad is going right up and down with him. He was one tough little guy, my old man. I'm gonna miss him a lot. Uh, I buy you a cup of coffee? You know what you should do? You should go home to your missus. I see you at work tomorrow morning. Sure? We're going to lose the romance, Perillo. Mm -mm. I don't think so. I don't know. We've got all this disgusting respectability. Trust me, Joyce. <laughs> Do I have a right so far? No. We're going to do things, Frank. Let's travel. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Europe, Japan. Let's redecorate my apartment. 